We are at uh, Claxo 2018 here in Buenos Aires, and we have the honor to have with us Goran Thornberg. He's a professor emeritus of Cambridge University. Goran, very nice to talk to you again. Welcome you. to Argentina. Great to see you again. Uh, Goran, um, you were the author, you are the author of the book The Killing Fields of Inequality. Yeah. Tell me how concerned are you about the issue of inequality in the world? Oh, I'm very concerned because it's, um, <clears throat> it's accelerating. Uh, I mean, if we take the, well, we should, in the world, we should distinguish between two things, inequality between nations or nation states and, and, uh, and within nation states. Mm -hmm. Uh, between nation states, there is a certain slight tendency towards a uh, convergence. Uh, many uh, countries in the third world have had a, a, uh, a good 21st century so far. But, and this is what is my, my main concern, uh, inside countries it's increasing uh, almost everywhere and it's uh, accelerating. And I can't see uh, in, in short term any social forces strong enough to, to stop the process. So I think it will uh, uh, increase even further mm -hmm. in the coming years. And in the case of uh, cities, for example, you were living in London for quite a while, mm. and you were saying even in the different neighborhoods and different boroughs of the city, you have different life expectancies according to the conditions yeah. of the different populations. Yes, that's a, uh, well, that's a general phenomenon in, in, in cities, actually. We have it even, I mean, in a rather well-organized uh, country and well-organized cities like Sweden. I mean, uh, there is in, in the, uh, what we in Sweden call the big cities, which are sort of uh, uh, half a million or to one million only, uh, population, uh, we have uh, differences in life expectancy between neighborhoods in the size of between six and eight years. And life expectancy between six and eight years of difference? Yeah. The same people in the same city, different different areas. Right, right. And, and uh, it's interesting you ask this thing about cities because it's, it's something which is little noticed, but uh, uh, both in terms of, of life expectancy and also in terms of in terms of income, um, cities can be very unequal. Uh, my most uh, worrying example, I think, is Johannesburg, the city of Johannesburg in South Africa, uh, where the income inequality is about within the city is about the same as between the households of the whole world. So uh, 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 cities can harbor enormous uh, inequalities living close by each other. How are you seeing Latin America nowadays? Well, Latin America, it means a bit, uh, depends a bit on what you, what you mean by, by nowadays. Because, I mean, until two or three years ago, Latin America was uh, the, uh, the great exception to the world in the first, say between 2002 and 2014, um, Latin America was the only region in the world in which economic inequality was actually declining. Um, that has stopped now almost everywhere. I think the only country where there's still uh, a, an equalization pro process going on to some extent is Bolivia, but for the rest, uh, uh, the equalization process has, has stopped, and we can expect it to to uh, turn to increasing inequalities in in Brazil, in Argentina, in Colombia. Uh, prob probably there will be some equalization in Mexico under uh, under Manuel Lopez Obrador. Mm -hmm. That's to be uh, expected, but. Latin America, even after the equalization mm -hmm. in the first 15 years of, of this century, 
still uh, is one of the high inequality uh, parts of the world. I mean, even countries like, like Uruguay, for instance, is more unequal than any country in Western Europe. You were participating here in the Claxon 2018 in a panel, and the name of the panel was the Trump world. Mm. What do you think about Donald Trump? And what is the effect, the effect of Trump in Europe, in Latin America, in the, in the world? Well, the, um, well, the Trump world, I, I think, is, is a, a certain, certain source or a certain type of, of post-neoliberalism, mm -hmm. um, and it, it expresses a, a profound crisis of uh, neoliberal economics and of the neoliberal conception of societies as consisting only of maximizing individuals. Um, but it's of course a, not a post-neoliberalist which people like me have been fighting for and hoping for it's a it's a um, substitution of, of neoliberalism with a uh, nationalist authoritarian and racist nationalist system but it it nevertheless it's, it's important I mean I think to to see it as an expression of a profound crisis of the uh, kind of political economy mm -hmm. which has dominated the world, I mean, since the 1970s. Now, the effect of the Trump regime in, in different parts of the world is another fascinating topic because they're also different. In Europe, Trump means the, the first European steps towards an independent foreign policy. For the first time, uh, the European Union is trying to do something uh, not following in the steps of the United States. Uh, the, the Climate Change Accord, for instance, mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, nuclear deal with Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Europe is, is not daring, I mean, to challenge the United States directly and openly, but it's trying to navigate, navigate around it. Whether that will <coughs> succeed or not is still an open question, but it's, that, that's what Trump has been in, in, in Europe, a, a certain, certain in, independence. And in the Korean Peninsula, I mean, uh, quite unexpectedly, I mean, Trump has, been, has meant so far a, a detente on the Korean well, Peninsula. At least was looking like. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas um, in the Middle East, I mean, it's it's an escalation of violence mm -hmm. and war and so on. Uh, so far, uh, I think the effects of of Trump has been Latin America has been uh, fairly limited, uh, apart from uh, um, the effect of, on uh, uh, Mexican and Central American migration. But we can discern already a kind of uh, axis in, in the Americas between uh, uh, Trump America and Bolsonaro America. Mm -hmm. And that I think is a, is a very dangerous and, uh, and uh, worrying uh, development. So you see, I mean, Trump and Trump is means very different things in different parts of the world. And that has to do something to do with that Trump is, is, is very emotional, something very emotional, mm -hmm. irrational, and therefore unpredictable. Mm -hmm. and, and the detente in, 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 in Korea can, mean, I mean, can easily turn into war tomorrow. It's, it's more difficult to imagine that the wars and violence in the Middle East can turn into Blow shares, but well. You never know. And uh, finally, Goran, um, what is the most important message that you are getting from this forum that you're going to take home with you? I think the, it, it is the continuing, in spite of these political setbacks, is the continuing 
close relations between social science and analysis and theory on the one hand and radical and progressive civic activism on the other. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this is a, a huge uh, conference with thousands mm -hmm. of people attending in, in, in various ways and so on. And we did an enormous amount of enthusiasm and, and, and commitment and, and fervor. So I mean, you, you can't find a, a social science Congress like this anywhere else in the world. <laughs> I mean, this is something unique to Latin America, and it's it's something very inspiring. I mean, for all for us, for for uh, us academics who have to to make uh, analyze uh, analysis of somber of the somber situation today and so on. But that's quite inspiring. Hey, Gordon Thurmond, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me here.